Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Grace, and if you are returning, welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here, whether you're returning or you're new. So today's video I'm super, super excited about. We are gonna be talking ages nine month to 12 month. I have the younger versions of this video that I will link floating around here if you're interested in watching. I have just graduated this era. My girls just turned one a few weeks ago, which is absolutely mental to think about. Whew. But I've been collecting my thoughts. I've been taking notes this whole time. So I would like to impart wisdom or tips or whatever I have for you. Real quick before I jump in, let me just say two things. I am experimenting with filming outside because it's so beautiful today. Oh my goodness. So I'm in the screened in porch. So if you hear weird background noises like dogs barking, planes flying, or if the audio just is not great, then I won't be filming out here again. I just wanted to try. So yeah. And then also, if you watched my last video, which was Dear Younger Self, I had some audio issues with this mic. There was some weird like staticky crackling and I'm hoping that was just like a one time weird thing. But I apologize in advance if there's any weird crackling that happens during this video. If that's the case, then I'll have to get a new microphone. But I just wanna get that out of the way. We're gonna jump in. Uh, this is quite the time. If you are a first time mom, or maybe you haven't been uh, a mom of babies for a while, there might be some things that you have forgotten. There's a plane right there. Hi plane, I see it. While I was setting this whole thing up, it was so quiet out here. I was like, this is perfect. And now there's planes, now there's wind. Oh, dogs. There are literally three dogs right over here that you can't see. You're gonna see a lot of transition in your child during this time. They have been cute little, you know, potatoes before this, but you are really, that nine to 12 month, you are going to see your baby really transitioning to a toddler. That's gonna to happen anywhere between nine and 12. Some babies develop a lot faster and you might start seeing this at around nine or 10 months. Other ones will be like my babies and they really didn't hit this until about 12 months. And I'm not saying this to be sad and like you're losing your baby. This is actually a super, super fun time, but you're gonna see a lot of changes. And at least for me, and this was with two babies, that change was fast, fast. Like, again, I said my babies didn't make this transition till closer to 12 months, but it was like, I had babies, 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 toddlers. Like, I know it wasn't overnight, but it sure did feel like that. I thought it was gonna be a more gradual change, but for me, it really wasn't. So I don't know if I, my babies were an anomaly, but it was kind of crazy how they went from this little, you know, potato that is helpless and I don't want to say boring, but <laughs> kind of just sits there to, oh, I am a strong, independent woman and I want to do what I want to do. I will tell you what I want. I will scream you know, like full toddler. And I'm going to be honest with you, my babies, and I know this was probably an anomaly having twins. My babies were pretty easy. I mean, the first eight weeks having them was hard, but from like eight weeks old to about 11 months old, my girls were like pretty easy. People would come up to me with twins and say like, oh, God bless you. It must be so difficult. And I was, me and my husband were both, both always like, it's not that hard, <laughs> but toddlers, it's a different story. Now my life is, is a challenge. So just be prepared for that. There's a lot of change that goes on with that. And the thing that is going to help you with that is your schedule, is your routine with a baby. But a baby schedule and routine is gonna look drastically different than a toddler schedule and routine. And I didn't make that routine change fast enough. Now I pretty much have. It means your nap time is gonna look different your baby, oh my gosh, once they are into like solid food and they're not on formula or breast milk very much, they're so hungry, so hungry all the time and they want to eat. And so you are going to be spending big chunks of your day just feeding them because formula and breast milk was great for filling them up. And it seemed fairly easy, I guess, uh, for you as mom. But once you are having to prepare like real food, it takes up a lot of your day <laughs> and they are hungry and they will let you know and they can go from like perfectly happy and fine to like 
I am hangry beyond all hangriness that I've ever hangried before. In a matter of like 30 seconds. So just try to get a routine. There are so many resources online of good routines for 13 month old. Well, we're not talking about that, but that's where I'm at right now. Um, but like for 10 month old, for 12 month old, just look at those routines. They are really going to be transitioning from three naps to two naps if they haven't already. And my girls are already starting to push back on even two naps. I'm going to try and keep that going for as long as I can. But yeah, as of the skills that they're learning. Something that I have found that really helps with fussiness, because again, once your babies are starting to become toddlers, like they want to be entertained all the time. And you know, most of us are trying not to raise iPad kids. Ooh. Um, so we're trying to keep screens to a minimum. I think that's the goal of most of us. I know I'm not saying that putting them in front of a screen is bad all the time. Um, my girls watch some TV too, but if you're looking for some non-screen type things to help with fussiness, taking them for a walk, if you have that option, which now that we live in the South, if we have that option, I'm so excited. So that's really awesome. Some people do throw their babies like in a car and take a drive, but with gas prices, I'm not doing that much. <clears throat> um, but the really, really neat thing that my mom actually taught me is putting babies in the bath. It doesn't even necessarily have to be an actual bath because bath time can be, <sighs> exhausting too, but literally just putting them in water can calm them down. My girls love to take baths because it's fun, but they can also have fun and occupy themselves. I'm sitting right there, but I can also kind of get a little bit of a break. Obviously don't leave them. Obviously, you know, pay attention to them, but it, it can kind of give me a little bit of a break. So putting your babies in the bath is a great way to like chill them the poop out. Next, this is really, really, really hard for mama hearts, I understand. But as your babies are learning to crawl, to pull up, to walk, there's going to be bumps and there's going to be falls. And every time they hit their head, Winnie, she will sit just like I'm sitting now and she will throw herself back and bang her head so hard. And I try to put like a pillow behind her or whatever, but she moves now. She scoots and she crawls and stuff like that. And sometimes she doesn't have a pillow and I feel so guilty. And then she screams and screams. And it's just like, I'm, I, I'm the worst mom on the planet, but it happens. And babies are a lot less fragile than we really give them credit. Obviously be careful. You don't want your babies like, you know, throwing themselves off a balcony, obviously, but just to take a little bit of the pressure off of you as mom, it's going to happen. And yeah, it's just, they're going to fall. That's how they learn. We all fall and we're okay. And it's also a really good exercise for you, um, on how to handle those kinds of things. And there's a lot of debate on like what you should say to a child once they fall. And you can do some research on that, but maintaining a calm demeanor when your child is screaming because they, you know, bump their head is a really good practice for us. And that's only going to get more intense as they get older. So yeah, just take it as a learning experience for both baby and for you. Okay. I talked about this in the last one, which was six to nine months. And that is to take a chill pill when it comes to milestones. It's good to still be aware of like milestone-ish things that they, your kids should be hitting. But like, do not compare yourself to the baby next door or the baby on social media because babies, they're all going, babies, toddlers, children, they're all going to hit milestones in their own time. If you're really concerned, you can talk to your pediatrician or your pediatrician will bring it up, but don't freak out. I, I had a friend who her baby was like crawling at seven months and literally my little Winnie just started crawling like a week ago and she's a year old now, but she just wasn't interested in it. And now she, she picked it up so much faster than Evie. Evie's been crawling for a little while now, but it took her so long to figure it out. But Winnie just watched her sister for like weeks and weeks and weeks and had no interest in it. And then all of a sudden she's like, I'd like to do that. So she picked up crawling really fast and now they're both crawling. But I talked to my pediatrician about it at their year old checkup. She was not concerned. She was like, well, 
if we come back at 15 months and she's still not crawling, then we'll kind of, you know, look at it. But you shouldn't be too concerned. And literally, like, a week and a half later, she was crawling. So, milestones, they're going to be different. Everything's going to be different. How your baby responds to whole food, how your baby responds to weaning, how your baby starts crawling, movement, walking. My girls aren't walking yet. There's a little baby across the street who's literally two weeks younger than them, and she's already walking. But it's fine. It's fine. Every baby develops at a different time. Chill. Okay, a couple more things. Transitioning from formula or breast milk to cow's milk is, is something that you do typically around a year old. Some people breastfeed for longer than that or do formula for longer. That's totally fine. But a lot of people do transition around a year old. That's what we did because our girls were on formula and formula is hella expensive if you don't know. So we wanted to transition. And it just so happened that it happened at a magical, magical time where we ran out of our last thing of formula at the last bottle feed the day before they turned one. And so literally age one on, they've been on cow's milk. So a lot of babies don't care for cow's milk right off the bat. And so what we did is we started to introduce little bits of it starting at about 10 months, 10 and a half months, which is totally fine to do. Um, so we would start with like two or three ounces once a day, a couple times a week, and then it just grew over time. My girls didn't really have any trouble with cow's milk, but some babies hate it right off the bat. So keep that in mind. It's okay to start introducing it. There's a lot of people that are like, or a lot of pediatricians that are like, don't start it before 12 months. Their bellies aren't ready. But then our pediatrician pointed out that last year when there was a formula shortage, suddenly all the pediatricians were like, no, it's fine to start babies on cow's milk at seven months, six months, whatever. They're fine. So don't freak out. You can start them on it a little bit early. Um, but yeah, so starting with little bits and then transitioning them, weaning them whenever is, you know, the right time for you and your child. Now my girls are exclusively on cow's milk and it's going fine. I want to talk through a couple of the sippy cups that we've tried and how that's going. So I want to start with a bottle actually. Um, once they have weaned off of formula and breast milk, you're only really supposed to put water in baby bottles. We got these Tommy Tippy, they're like 11 ounce bottles, maybe 12 ounce um, bottles because we just did the huge cross country um, move and we didn't have all, all of our bottles. These are the best. I wish we had had these so long ago. Um, yeah, they're so big. My girls love them. So they still do use these occasionally just for water, but we're not using bottles very much anymore. Um, there's debate among people based on sippy cups versus straws. Sippy cups can be like bad for their teeth development or their palate or something like that. So we don't use this very much, but my mom who we're living with right now, she had these, no, she didn't. She had another kind, but we bought these, um, out of desperation and my girls love them. They are sippy cups, but... They're by Nook. Yeah, this is Nook. They were super affordable, like two of these for like $6 or something like that. Um, and we use these for milk and water and juice, all the things. Um, but the girls really love them. These we got for their birthday from their Nana. They're by Zach. And I wanted them because they're Disney princesses and I'm obsessed with Disney princesses because I used to work at Disney. I don't think my girls are quite ready for these now that we've um, tried to have them use them a couple times. They aren't completely spill proof, but they're pretty darn spill proof. But the actual act of the sucking um, is pretty, you have to be pretty strong. So I think my girls will grow into these and I think these will be great. But they, they at this current stage at almost 13 months, they're having a little bit of trouble with these. So yeah, for future. But the wonderful ones that we use all the time and my girls love so much are these. They are by Dr. Brown's. Um, we put milk in them. They are like totally spill proof. They're awesome. 
yeah, this is what my girls learned to use a straw with and it's been quite easy for them to learn. So this is 10 out of 10 recommend. All right, last thing that we're gonna talk about, my mom just got home, <laughs> um, is three types of toys that they're really loving. <sighs> Y'all have talked about Love Every and I, I'm a Love Every advocate for sure. But this in particular came in the nine to 12 month box. My girls are obsessed with this toy. It's just three little pegs that go through these little holes. There's some ASMR for you. Um, you can also block the holes so it goes like this and then you can hit it like that. Very simple toy. My girls are absolutely obsessed with this. They also just carry these around. They put them in their mouth. It's, it's the whole thing. They love this toy. And there is a whole Montessori, you know, belief behind, you know, they're trying to learn that like things go in things and things fit into different things. I don't remember all the stuff clearly. Uh, but they love that toy, a simple toy like that. They also have a cube that they got for Christmas from their Grammy. I will insert some footage of them using that. It's, they have so many different things to play with different things to explore. It works really well with different levels. They started at 10 months playing with that and they're loving it still at 13 months. They can also now pull up on it, use it as stability. It's great. And then finally, this could be a little bit controversial, but a walker. So we don't use the walker. We don't overuse it, but our little Evie, who is the mover and the shaker of the two of them, she loves it. You do have to be really, really careful, obviously, because like if you have stairs, you have to make sure your child's not gonna fall down the stairs in a walker or they're not gonna pull something down on them. So you do have to make sure your home is fairly baby-proofed if you use a walker, but it is really good for a baby that wants to explore, but maybe wants to be held all the time to explore and you're like, I need my arms, I need to do things, to put them in a walker. So. Again, there are, might be people in the comments that are like, walkers are so bad for their hips and walkers are so bad for safety and blah, 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 blah. You might be right, but also lots of people use them. And it's, uh, I think most things, if used, you know, correctly, safely in, you know, what's the word I'm using, oh, I'm looking for, um, not overusing it, I think it can be an okay thing. Um, we wouldn't have bought a walker. My mom already had a walker here because of her other grandchildren. And now that I see how much Evie loves it, it has been so fun um, and kind of a time saver for me as mom. So that's all that I have to say. I hope that you found this useful and helpful. Comment down below if you have your own tips for moms of nine to 12 month olds. I'm gonna be continuing to make this series as my girlies get older and are experiencing new things. But I love to hear from you guys. I love to learn from you guys. So please drop your own wisdom below. If you enjoyed this video and if you made it this far, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and joining the conversation and the little community here that is small but growing. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, but I forget about TikTok a lot, but you can still join me over there. Um, and we have some really different videos coming up. Obviously, I'm still going to be talking motherhood and babies and things like that, but we are also in the process of buying a house right now that needs some re renovations. So we're gonna have some videos of that kind of ilk. So if that's your type of thing, please subscribe. I'm really excited. It's gonna be a fun, quirky, funky house. So um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching. Bye.